Though the rank and file battle droids of the CIS droid army weren't terribly formidable opponents, the Confederacy's elite units tended to be much more threatening. The infamous droidikas could change the course of entire battles, while General Grievous's Magna Guards could even kill Jedi. The elite droids we'll be discussing today were a bit less fearsome, but they were considerably more versatile. We're talking about the BX series droid commando, a much more advanced edition of the standard B1 battle droid, and in this video, we'll be looking at what made them so effective. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The BX series droid commando was a product of Bactoid Combat Automata, the same Genosian firm that produced the older B1 and B2 battle droids. Though the previous models in the B-series were designed to be mass-produced for combat, after the start of the Clone Wars, Bactoid started to shift toward designing elite units, determining that B-1 and B-2 were enough to fill out the ranks of the droid army. The B-3 Ultra Battle Droid, a design based on the B-2 Super Battle Droid, was an early foray into the production of an elite B-series droid. The BX Commando was another such attempt. The BX bore many resemblances to the older B-1 battle droids, but these commando droids were completely new designs with much more effort put into the development of their hardware and software alike. While the joints of the B-1's limbs provided limited mobility and were only held together magnetically, which made them a notorious weak spot, the BX featured tougher joints that not only provided greater ranges of motion, but also allowed commando droids to move much faster than their rank and file counterparts. In general, commando droids were more flexible and more agile, and they seemed to have been stronger as well. Commando droids also had much heavier armor than the B1s, and their plating seems to have been on par with that of the B2. A BX could shrug off multiple blaster shots to the chest, and the droid's only apparent weak spot seems to have been the head. Commando droids were also shown to have been able to remain functioning despite extreme damage, such as being sliced in half at the waist. The commando droid's frame was much sleeker than the B1, and this wasn't just for appearance's sake. The BX was specifically designed to more closely mimic the rough shape of a human body, allowing them to wear clone trooper armor for infiltration missions. To enhance the disguise, commando droids had the ability to perfectly mimic voices, though their limited vocabulary and inability to mimic the quirks and mannerisms of organic beings meant that this was only effective to a point. It's also worth asking how the hell they managed to convincingly imitate beings with five fingers when they only had three, which were much thicker than human fingers. But there's no convincing answer to that question as far as we can find, so we'll leave the matter alone. As commandos, BXs were programmed for a wide variety of roles. Primarily, they were used as commandos or as elite soldiers, but they were also deployed as prison guards, snipers, interrogators, and gunners. Naturally, the equipment they were issued varied accordingly. Almost all BXs carried E5 blaster rifles, the standard issue weapon for the CIS droid army, though they could use them much better than B1s could, as they had better accuracy and a better sense of cover. Commando droids stationed to defend key positions, such as the Citadel on Lola Seyu, paired these blaster rifles with handheld energy shields. Many commando droids were shown to carry vibro swords. Typically, only the captain of a commando droid squad would carry a sword, but standard BXs have been shown making use of them as well. Commando droids could use these swords to deadly effect, as they seem to have been extremely skilled in close quarters combat. Commando droids have even been shown fighting in unarmed combat and performing quite well at it too. BXs were sometimes also equipped with stun batons, while those assigned to act as snipers made use of sniper rifles, as you might expect. Most, or all BXs, also seem to have been equipped with fusion cutters built into their forearms, which allow them to slice through sealed doors. Other equipment employed by commando droids includes thermal detonators and macro binoculars. The commando droid was developed a few months into the Clone Wars, and its first deployments were in late 22 BBY. Their first known appearance was in an attack on the Republic outpost on the Rishi moon, but this probably wasn't their first outing, as at that time, Captain Rex was already aware of their existence, and the Kaminoans had developed lookalikes to serve as training droids into Poker City. 
Nonetheless, the Rishi Moon battle was an excellent demonstration of the BX's capabilities. A single squad of the droids successfully infiltrated and captured a Republic base, killing or chasing off its defenders, and they would have gotten away with it if the base hadn't happened to be due for an inspection the day of the attack. Even then, the Commando droids proved tough and dangerous in their skirmishes against Captain Rex, Commander Cody, and the remainder of Domino's squad, and their hot wiring of the base's communication systems was so thorough that the clones had to blow up the whole building just to let the Republic know that something was up. After Rishi, Commando droids made sporadic appearances in engagements all over the galaxy, often posing a serious threat to Republic forces. On Seleucami, a BX sniper came extraordinarily close to killing Captain Rex, missing a fatal shot by less than an inch. During the Battle of Lola Seyu, the unit of commando droids assigned to guard the Citadel proved nigh unstoppable when backed with the Citadel's defense systems, and not even the presence of several Jedi allowed the Republic infiltration team to hold them off for more than a few minutes at a time. In the later half of the war, their appearances became steadily more common, with small groups of commando droids showing up on Felucia, Kiros, Dathomir, Onderon, and Ringo Vinda. Commando droids weren't just perfect. Jedi and clones were capable of destroying them without too much hassle in an even fight. But these droids were skilled at stacking the odds in their favor, and they had a tendency to complicate missions when Republic forces least expected it, allowing them to do serious damage. They weren't super soldiers, but they were pretty close for battle droids. They were intelligent, agile, tough, and versatile. They may have looked a lot like the standard B1s, but individually, they were better in every conceivable way. With all this in mind, it's worth asking why the Confederacy bothered using standard battle droids at all when the BX was so much better. There's two answers to that question. First, it would have been prohibitively expensive. Commando droids didn't come cheap, and the Confederacy couldn't manufacture enough to serve as a full army. It could deploy them in considerable numbers here and there, but by necessity, most of the time the droid army could only spare a small squad or two of BXs. The second answer is a bit more interesting. As Dave Filoni pointed out in the commentary featurette for the episode in which the droids first appeared, despite their obviously superior design, the commando droids failed to hold the Rishi Moon outpost when the clones counterattacked, while an army of B1s was able to recapture it with relative ease. This, Filoni stated, was something that the writing team had done on purpose to establish that the original battle droids were still a threat, even if they were less advanced, due to their advantage in numbers. This harkens back to something we discussed in our videos about the B1. Assessing the standard battle droids and comparing them to other soldiers or droid models on an individual level misses the point of their design. B1s weren't meant to operate as individuals, they were meant to fight in force, with the advantage of numbers on their side. Though they were superior to the B1 on an individual level, the BX's complex design left them unable to exploit the most important battlefield advantage battle droids had, their mass producibility. The commando droid then is best understood not as an improved version of the B1, but as a variant meant for a different mission profile. The B-1 was designed to hold battlefields, to be deployed in vast numbers to overwhelm and crush the enemy, but in small groups with more complex objectives, they performed extremely poorly. The BX took over that niche, which it was much better suited for, but if the Confederacy had tried to use them to take over the B-1's niche as well, they would have bankrupted themselves. The Commando Droid was just one part of a much larger droid army. So that's our look at the BX series Droid Commando one of the coolest Separatist droid designs in our opinion. But what do you think? Are there other Separatist droids you'd like us to discuss? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.